About 200 species new to Bukit Timah Nature Reserve were recorded during a comprehensive survey conducted by NPARCS recently, among them more than 30 species of spiders and 10 species of beetles. They're potentially new to Singapore and some may even be new to science. Researchers also found records of more than 160 plant species uh, which were not previously listed in the reserve. Now, for more on this, we're joined by Dr. Lena Chan, National Parks Board's Senior Director for International Biodiversity Conservation. Lena, thank you so much for coming in. Welcome. It thank almost, you for inviting. It almost sounds like they've relocated. They've moved into Bukit Timah the way we've described it there. But were they there all along and we've discovered them? How, how does this work? Okay, maybe I should tell you a little bit about how we hmm. did the survey. Yes. Yeah. So, um, this uh, publication, 610 pages of it, is the... Re contains all the results of that four-year survey that we did. And it was important for us to do a survey of Bukit Timah Nature Reserve because it's one of the four nature reserves we have in Singapore. And people are quite amazed that you can have biodiversity in a city. Mm. And it's amazing because more than 55% of the plant species in, uh, 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 in Singapore actually reside in Bukit Timah. Mm. And mm. also, uh, over 80% of the amphibians, native amphibians of Singapore, are found in Bukit Timah Nature Reserve. So it is a very, very important area. And that is why we cannot love what we don't know. So that is why we need to do the survey. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And you've done a very good job with the, the level of detail. Were you surprised how many things you've discovered that we didn't previously know? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, we went there uh, about 20 years ago. We did a survey before and we thought, wow, what great biodiversity. And now we are even more amazed. Mm. And the simple reason is because we are finding more and more people, citizen science as well as scientists, who mm. actually um, are there out there studying more taxonomic groups. And by that, I mean, uh, 20 years ago, we didn't have in the publication, we didn't have anything on spiders. Mm. And now we have on spiders, we have on autoptera, we have on, you know, um, some um, flies, and we have on separate xylic beetles. So it's just amazing that we are learning more and more. But what is more important in this study is that we connected it with the physical environment. Mm. So we know more about the soil we have there, we know more about the quality of the uh, stream, and we know how the rivers in Bukitima, which is actually the source of most of our rivers in Singapore, mm. starts off, and all that. So what we are doing is go from the macro, which is a physical environment, right down to even micro. So we are also doing DNA barcoding or species of particularly insects and plants. So it's a very, very comprehensive mm. in really every sense of that word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A wonderful yeah. amount of uh, new data that you have. Uh, Alfred Russell Wallace, of course, was always on Book at oh, Hill, yes. wasn't he? But these yes. are a few things he missed out on. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yes. um, you mentioned spiders, and I want you to share a little bit more about that because you found quite a lot of, of new spiders there. D what's the significance of the spider in the ecosystem? System. Yes, the spiders actually do a very important role. First of all, they actually are predators for some of the species, like for example, mosquitoes and pest insects. But at the same time, they are food for, you know, uh, uh, various things like the birds, as well as the other predators and mammals. And so they actually form, they are both predators as well as food for other things mm. and they also you know break down you know the, the plants and all so they play a very very important role but actually it's not just the spiders i think everything plays an important role just like we can learn in community can learn from the ecosystems because we all depend on each other the interdependency so you know it's it's wonderful you see the the they are also pollinators just as the um, uh, you know bees and the butterflies and the dragonflies so they all uh, work together and plants can't survive with these insects because um, many of the plants can only germinate or grow 
with certain, you know, bacteria species and various other mycorrhiza, yeah. And so, Singapore yeah. is at a premium when it comes to sort of nat natural jungle and, yes. and the sort of wildlife that yes. we that you were t just talking about yes. here. How fragile is the ecosystem here? Because Bukit Timah itself it has a lot of traffic going through it from hikers and mountain bikers as well. Yes. Um, what was good was that uh, during that survey, we actually closed Bukit Timah for two years. Mm. And there was a lot of resistance, but... But what was great was we worked with the community and we worked with the NGOs, we worked the, with the residents and many, many people who love uh, Bukit Timah, uh, cyclists and joggers and everybody. And, and what was important was that we closed it and gave it a rest, gave it a spite. Mm -hmm. And that actually helped it to actually recuperate. And that is very important. And that is why when you see that um, certain uh, uh, paths are closed, mm -hmm. um, that's because we want to give it a kind of a breather, a holiday from all that, mm -hmm. you know, walks and intrusion. And, yeah. But we, we want people to actually visit Bukitima because um, you won't, you can't associate with it, you can't, um, you know, um, uh, be, you can't appreciate it if you don't experience it. So I think it's very important for us to be with nature, mm. and it's good for our health. Yes, oh, absolutely. Yes, yeah, yeah, totally agree yeah. with you there. Thank you so much, yes. Dr. Lina Chan, for coming in and speaking to us. National Parks Board Senior Director for International Biodiversity Conservation.